Hi guys, we are learning with McKernan again here today talking about the beautiful daylily and its name makes perfect sense when you know more about the flower. Yes, so the Latin name is Humericalis and it means beautiful for a day. And that refers to the beautiful flowers that we have on these daylily plants, but they only last an individual day uh, per flower. And so the neat thing about daylilies is they'll send up these stems or what are called scapes and they'll have multiple flower buds on them. And so they'll bloom for multiple days at a time, but each individual flower only lasts for about 24 hours or less or essentially one day. But these guys come back every year, so you get yes. to enjoy them. Yes, the daylilies are actually a perennial plant. They have these wonderful grassy leaf, grass-like leaves. They're very low maintenance, and so they're very popular in the garden um, because of all of the, the different varieties that you can have and how easy they all are to grow. Um, as you can see displayed here, they come in a wide variety of colors, anything from kind of pinks and purples to deep reds and maroons, lots of oranges and yellows. And sometimes you can get double petals, single petals, petals with center circles here that have yeah. different colors. Um, really a lot of variety depending on what you love in the garden. Yeah, they're really, really beautiful. And you say they're pretty easy to care for. What should I yeah. be doing with them this time of year? So what we really want to do is focus on maximizing the number of blooms. Okay. We want to make sure that if we have these, they're planted in a full sun area. Uh, we want to make sure that when we plant them, typically in the fall, we're going to make sure we mix in some compost and organic matter into that soil. They'll tolerate just about any soil, which is why they're great for Kansas. Oh. But having a little bit of extra compost and organic matter is helpful. Right now, we really want to be focusing on looking for blooms that are spent. You can see oftentimes these flowers will fade after that day. Okay. So we can pinch them off um, and remove them. If we forget to pinch them off, sometimes we'll see these seed heads that form. Okay. And we just want to come out there with our, our pruners then and clip off those seed heads so that the plant spends more energy on making new flowers rather than trying to produce seeds. Okay, what's another thing we need to do to take care of them? Is there anything else? Because they do seem relatively simple. Th they really are. We can also fertilize them, but again, our fertilizer is not best this time of year. We really want to do it in the fall, in the spring, after they're done blooming in the fall, but before they start in the spring. That's going to encourage the most flowers with the least amount of excessive leaf growth. And we also want to be identifying which ones now aren't blooming well because mm. daylilies are going to need divided, dug up, and separated every three to five years. Okay. And so that's going to invigorate more flowers the next year, and it's also going to help increase the root growth of the plants as well. So ones that aren't blooming now or ones that have been there for five or more years, typically those are going to be the ones that we want to dig up in September, maybe even August dig up, wash the soil off, break them up into smaller plants, and then replant so we can enjoy all these beautiful blooms. All right, thank you, Matt. Always so interesting. We absolutely love all the stuff you uh -huh. bring in. All right, guys, stay with us. We have Mr. Food coming up next.